throws. Hunter Brown struggles. Ronel Blanco shines. And Justin Dearden is Dusty Baker's sleeper for spring training. Let's talk about this on this edition of Locked on Astros. Alvarez hits a high drive center field. Veer leans back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talkstros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can we find you at? They can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Strohs411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Positive. I love seeing Rip Heisman. Always Strohs. All righty. Thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day, whether it's on that YouTube. Uh, thank you for going and subscribing. Give us a big fat thumbs up and go ahead and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Make sure you listen to Locked on Astros podcast every day. And guys, it's rodeo season. I'm going to be going to the rodeo tomorrow. I'm super excited about that. That's why I'm, why I'm wearing my cowboy hat. And I'm super excited about that. So I know Brett's been calling me a Rip Heisman if you're a fan of Yellowstone. But uh, the Astros had to make a long trip today to go play the Red Sox. And they ended in a tie game. Tie? I didn't know they had tie games in baseball. Yes, in spring training they do. Uh, just so they don't have to keep on using that. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of comments that people like the hat. So I brought it back and Brett loves the hat. And I do. So. It's... You know what, Eric? I love the hat. You know why? Because, dude, it is it is you. It is it is your thing. I just, you know, um, we talked about it before the game. Look, I've never been one. I think I've worn a cowboy hat one time, um, and I felt awkward. The only time I ever walked into a country and western, like, boot barn type store, like the record scratched, the music stopped, and everybody looked at me, and they're like, what's that guy doing here? So I've never been one for cowboy hats, but if you can rock it, good job, man. I like it, dude. I love the vest. Like, seriously, like the whole Rip Heisman thing, that might have to be like your alter ego. Uh, maybe when we jack like three home runs, let's let's make it a thing. Let's, let's talk off air. Let's get a game plan together. If something happens in a game, Rip Heisman shows up. It could be a thing. All righty, and – Hats off to y'all for uh, getting us to 7,000 subscribers. Um, let me get the hat straight again. But uh, yeah, we hit 7,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you for that. And thank you to everybody who's going to subscribe to the show from this point on. So I got to get right. it right now. So uh, anyway, so guys, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, Hunter Brown, he didn't have his best performance out there today, but it's his first start uh, as good as Luis Garcia did the other day. You can't get too discouraged from what Hunter Brown did. He felt rushed. We'll talk about that in a second. And then, but uh, Ronel Blanco, he was, uh, he pitched two innings. Should we read too much into that? We'll talk about that. And uh, I want to get your thoughts and opinions on something I talked about in yesterday's podcast, which was uh, Alvarez may be returning maybe in 10 days or so, and he should be ready for opening day. And Alex Bregman should be returning to the lineup pretty soon. And uh, don't forget that from Valdez and Christian Javier are both pitching tomorrow. Yes, they are. Well, you know, they're trying to get ramped up. I know Jose Altuve had his second game where he had, had you know, three at bat. So he talked about getting in early work. Um, with Jordan Alvarez, I don't know if, if, if you want me to go at that right now, That's right. um, it's, you know, it's a little concerning. I, I do like how you totally obeyed HIPAA laws and you didn't break any on the show when you went solo. So that's good. Um, you know, keeping us safe, you know, thank you. Um, anyways, but it, it is, it is less than ideal to have the big fella, um, you know, I guess in the waiting, waiting in the wings, not swinging a bat. When the guy that was supposed to be the least healthy coming into camp, Michael Brantley, is actually taking swings. 
I would rather the Astros proceed with caution here and make sure they get this right. But what I wonder is, because there wasn't a surgery and because we don't really know all the details, is, is this going to be a nagging thing, Eric, that happens all season where we see two or three IL stints for Yordan Alvarez so that he's healthy for the playoffs? Because when it comes down to it, it's about being ready for the playoffs. And you wonder if after that power, if after that that insurgence of power in the in the first playoff series, if that's really where things went with his hand and how he was feeling at the end of the season. So I hope it's much ado about nothing and that it fixes itself. I just, something tells me it's going to be something that's going to be a recurring theme with him all year. Yeah. Um, and just as Alvarez, we could be dealing with this. I know that this is something that we dealt with a little bit last year, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. I know when the game, the big, the bright lights come on, I know that he's going to be out there and he's going to be getting the job done until we don't see him out there. That's when I'm going to get worried. So I'm not worried about him missing practice games. I'm worried yeah. about him missing actual games and we'll worry about that down the road. Right now, Dana Brown is saying that he's going to be there for opening day. Uh, Dusty Baker is saying uh, he doesn't know what's going on. No updates. He doesn't want to violate HIPAA law. So uh, we don't know who's telling the truth here or not, but I reckon uh, we go ahead and talk about Hunter Brown now. Hunter Brown yes. made his first start of spring training. And I know coming up, uh, the kind of his command has been something that a lot of people have been a little bit worried about. He did struggle with a little bit in today's game, but uh, he, he threw 32 pitches and he got 16 only 16 of them were strikes of those 32. And I know last year when he came up, he threw uh, 67% of his pitches for strikes last year. So he kind of answered some of the criticism and he looked right. dominant last year, but this was his first um, outing as a, okay, I'm pretty sure I made the starting rotation, but also he had the pitching clock. And I know, I think it was Colleen said that didn't he pitch with the, the pitching clock last year. Yes, but this is in a big league camp. This is not triple a, there's a lot more pressure with all the, with dusty Baker and all the pitching coaches watching you. It's a much different ball game. So, uh, he said it was the first time, uh, pitching with a clock in a little bit on the backfields. Obviously we have it, but it's not really enforced as much. You're not going to lose a ball to it. First game of spring, I guess, I kind of sped up a little bit. I'm going to try to figure that out. Well, you know, one of the things that that we know that's, you know, going on here is that he's focusing on refining his slider, okay, his slider location. Right. And so he's keeping on the low 90s, you know, he's keeping that down in a way for swings and misses what he's looking for. Um, he basically said these were some competitive reps with this slider, kind of begrudgingly a little bit. Um, especially the one that struck Allen and forced a home run. Um, he escaped the outing healthy and with acceptable velocity, but the finer points must be refined. Remember last year going into camp, his focus was I need to control my breaking pitches. And that was his biggest thing. And when he was struggling in triple a, that's, that was his, his command was on his slider was on his breaking pitches. Then it right. seemed like when he got called up, like you had said, um, he really, I mean, you talk about 67% of his pitches were strikes. He came in almost like he he came he into plan. the pressure pit yeah. and he did phenomenal. Like he performed really well. So now he's in the second year. He's had a lot of time to think about it. He's working on mechanics. And if you noticed, um, well, I don't know if anyone saw this because this is a, a personal friend of ours, um, Tim, who's actually at spring training right now, season ticket holder, who's 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 given us tickets to attend games, who's given us tickets to give away. Um, he was sitting behind home plate, and two or three of Hunter's warm-up pitches weren't even over the plate. So you could tell he's struggling with this command going in. Um, and, you know, nerves. I like when you yeah. – I'm sorry? Nerves, probably. Yeah, nerves, yeah. And, I mean, he just, he just didn't look totally comfortable. Um Brown said, you're just trying to get the sliders down and away and throw heaters in the zone. I didn't execute, getting ahead of hitters and 
things like that. But trying to get my timing right, I think I was a little quick with that. So just kind of figure that out over the next couple of days to translate into the outing. And Martin Maldonado also said that he could tell that he was struggling. So Martin Maldonado has great value. And I'm reading right now on projection for the Astros from baseball prospectus. They're not very kind when it comes to the metrics defensively, but they don't ignore the intangible feature that Martin Maldonado is and helping these pitchers focus. And if there's anybody behind the plate that can help Hunter Brown, it is definitely um, Martin Maldonado. And if there's anybody that can help you, if you're into sports betting, it's definitely FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here. We passed the All-Star break. We're launching into the playoffs, and the Astros are steamrolling their way to a number one pick. Pray for Victor, as Tillman Fertitta says. Download FanDuel today, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get the no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance to win a bigger payout with same game parlay. So don't miss this chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So with a veteran just trying to work on something, you're not too worried about it. So if uh, we had somebody like Framber Valdez go out tomorrow and give up four or five runs, you're not too concerned about that. He's just working on just finding his stuff. With somebody with a very little experience like Hunter Brown, you try not to read too much into it because you saw what he did last year. It's small sample oh, yeah. size, granted. But you're going to give him the benefit of the doubt until uh, he continues to show something else. So I just think that this was maybe just he just wasn't ready or he. It I just think it's his first out. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, just OK, because we're going to talk about Dearden here in a second or here in another segment. You can't read too much into everything in spring training. I think a hitter doing what he's doing, you can maybe look a little bit more favorably on. Hunter Brown, the concern isn't, is he is he ready? And I've even seen people opining on, you know, Twitter saying that, you know, people in the Astros world have like overreacted to calling him the next Justin Verlander. No, because everybody in the baseball world has called him the next Justin Verlander. The right. pitching ninja has called and they don't call him that because he's accomplished so much. They call him that because of his pitching motion, because of what even in baseball perspectives, what they say about his high ceiling. And Hunter Brown is a number one or number two guy in this rotation when he is cemented in. So I would I'm not worried at all about Hunter Brown. Now, I'm really glad when when pitchers do well, I don't really think much of it when they don't do well. I, I just unless it's a pattern and he goes through spring training, he has like a 30 ERA, then maybe there's some concerns. Maybe he's injured, but that is not at all what's going on. It was mechanics. It was lack of control. I mean, when, when you ding a guy on his foot trying to get a slider and you're working on it, you're working on your mechanics and it's nothing more than that. I think. Well, the Astros have a situation right now, especially with Lance McCullers going down. Yeah. Uh, you don't have too many major league ready starters outside of Forrest Whitley, Brandon Belak, and Dana Brown has said that he's looking for somebody to kind of take the next step, maybe out of the bullpen. And I know we've talked about uh, Brian Abreu on the podcast, and I know we've said that maybe he's cemented as that reliever. And he also mentioned Ronel Blanco as somebody who can possibly come be extended, stretched out to be a starter. And so he mentioned this after the, the game or during broadcast the other day. But today, Ronel Blanco came in and pitched one inning, but then he came back out and pitched a second inning. Could he be, uh, be being stretched out to be a starter? So he pitched two innings today, allowed two hits, three strikeouts. So he's looked really good this year. Will he make the opening day roster? I don't know. We'll have to talk about Noli Bredis. I did see this. Um, 
I did see a question we'll address in a second, but there's a lot of quality pitchers that are probably going to make the open day roster. I'll give you my bullpen picks in a second, but um, I don't know if Blanco even makes the opening day roster, but if you need a six starter come May, you do need some options. And if Brandon Belak's not the guy, if Forrest Whitley is not ready to be the guy until mid season, then you need an, another option and you need some guys being stretched out in triple a. And if they think Blanco is the guy, then this is the start of it. Plus, you need somebody starting with the Astros because think about it. How many starters are going to go play in the World Baseball Classic? Yeah. So Yeah, exactly. So on the Ronald Ball, because, you know, I know last time we talked, I didn't necessarily shoot it down, but I was I was, I was, was pretty about you know, 90% against it, okay? Now, again, not really too much in the spring training because I, I don't want to contradict myself, but go back to what he did in this winter ball league where he was kind of like the league MVP or that, you know, their version of the Cy Young. Um, in his 2022 regular season, Eric, he pitched in seven games. He had a 7.11 ERA and only 6.1 inning pitched and seven strikeouts. But Ronel Blanco in spring training, two games, zero ERA three innings pitched and six strikeouts. Ronel mm-hmm. Blanco has improved vastly. Ronel Blanco's progression has come to fruition. And I think we're starting to see a very, re- a very reliable long reliever. But what that means is if you're going to put him a long reliever, maybe my pick or my, you know, my lack of understanding of how well Ronel Blanco could do in a starting role or my lack of trust. You know, I put that on Brandon Belak, like him being the sixth starter. Maybe Blanco could be that guy. Um, Belak, I think, holds value as a relief pitcher, as a spot starter. But Blanco could be that guy. The thing is, and what I learned from that Baseball Prospectus article, and I'm going to keep going back to that, just kind of mention it, is because they talked about how the Astros have – They're like a clock, but we just see like the minute hand, the second hand. We just see the big parts. We don't see the intricate details and the things that makes this clock run, the Houston Astros. And he said they're not broken. They just keep bringing in pieces and run better. And so whatever it is they're evaluating with Blanco and Belak and Brown, I promise you they're going to make the right decision. We've got to trust the process. Um, there, you know, a part of the new campaign slogan is the golden era. Okay. I mean, this is the golden era. We've got this discussion. Who's going to be our six starter? What clubs are having that discussion right now? Right. I mean, I guess you have to just, I mean, it's not because we don't trust any of our fifth starter. Uh, there's an article right. today about her, Jose or Kitty wanting to stay in a rotation all year this year. And that's yeah. a big goal for him. And we saw Luis Garcia switching away from the rockabye baby motion to be a more traditional. He's still taking that one step, but it's only that one step and he's not doing the arm motion. So we and we're, he looked good we're, doing it. Yeah. And uh, I love um, the pitching ninjas um, like animation he did where he, he had the yeah. rock, the baby rocking and then throwing the baby and everything. Right. <laughs> and so it's just amazing what he's able to do. But uh, I think that the Astros are just kind of looking to see what they have in case they need it. And Anoli Paredes uh, has struggled with command in the past, but he's also shown last year that he could be dominant. I, I don't know if he was the closer down in AAA, but he was really dominant. I think he had a one point something ERA down in AAA, and he has nothing left to prove in AAA. Unfortunately, there's not much room for him on the major league roster because the Astros went out of their way to get Matt Gage. And I think Matt Gage is somebody that um, Dana Brown wanted and probably somebody Dusty Baker, once he sees what he has, he wants. And don't forget about Seth Martinez. Seth Martinez is somebody yeah. that uh, Astros fans want and Dusty Baker probably wants. And Phil Matan will probably be on this roster. So oh, yeah, you're going to I mean, have a full bullpen unless there's any type of injury. So uh, Paredes will be there in case of injury. Uh, and then also when you need a six starter, 
one of these guys will have to go down. Yeah, you know, Paredes, and I've said this before, so I'm not going to just re- repeat myself over and over, but it is the way he throws. When he had his success, it was in 2020. There weren't any crowds. Ever since then, he struggled at the major league level. But like you mentioned, and we saw it at Sugarland. I even saw him pitch in Sugarland. The dude was nails. And I was like, where is this Anoli Paredes? I think it's the herky-jerky nature of his. It's hard to harness a, a baseball and spin it in the zone, and especially with the way he steps and doesn't step and he's not consistent. It just seems to get all just kind of jumbled up. But one person, Eric, that had success today in one and one-thirds innings was friend of the show, Joe Record. Joe Record went out there and had two strikeouts in his one and one-thirds innings pitch. It's great to see all these guys that are on the brink of being on that team. And I think Anoli is someone that they could pull up, but he's going to have to when he gets up here. If he gets gets called up for a game, he can't walk, he can't give up hits, he's got to perform. Like, his time is now. Um, Anoli Paredes, great kid. I love his energy. I love the way he approaches a game. He he's just not he's just not not consistent enough. Um, and someone like Joe Record has got a more repeatable motion, has got a more repeatable throwing motion, and I think someone like that or Sean Dubin has a little bit higher chance of actually making a, a, a bigger impact this year. You're going to see a lot of pitchers come up especially if there's more injuries, especially if there's an extended stay for Lance McCullers, things like that. You might see three or four pitchers in the major leagues, Eric, get some time like we saw last year with Parker Mashinsky and some others. Right. Uh, there's actually a good article, um, getting back to Dana Brown and yeah. the New York Times today, about him being the only African-American GM in baseball right now. Wow. And it took him that. 30 years to get there. And it's actually a good article. We don't have time to really go through it. Uh, but I'll, I'm going to go ahead and finish reading it later. We can talk about it later. Uh, but uh, there's uh, some quotes in there from Jim Crane. And you know how all those haters were saying, well, Jim Crane just wants to be the um, the Jones. Uh, what's what's the Cowboys owners? Um, Jerry Jones. Jerry uh, Jones. The Astros. And he just wants to be the Astro, the owner and the GM and everything. And here's some quotes from Crane. He said, I was just trying to make sure we got the right people in the right spots. That's all I was doing. I never wanted to be the GM. I wasn't looking for the attention. I like it the way it is now. I check in with the guys. If you need anything, you call me. I told Dana, you're running the show, not me, basically. You know, yeah, that I think that Jerry Jones comparison is a little kind of far-fetched because – If you know anything about Jerry Jones, I mean, he didn't fire Jimmy Johnson because of poor job performance. He fired Jimmy Johnson because Jimmy Johnson got more popular than Jerry Jones. And Jerry Jones has to be the most popular guy in the room. And that's why he got Barry Switzer, because Barry Switzer was a yes man. And so when Barry Switzer won that Super Bowl with the Cowboys, he won because it's easy to have nice leftovers after a great steak dinner, right? Like you can go to Perry's and get that, that big pork chop. The next day, it's pretty darn good lunch, right? And that's what you have with Jerry Jones. That's not Jim Crane. Jim Crane could care less about being popular. Um, The two different conversations I've had with him in person at the stadium. And if you ever see him, go up to him, tell him, shake his hand, introduce yourself. He'll talk to you. He'll look you in the eye. And he is a true leader. He puts people in the right place at the right time with, I mean, he puts the smart people in the right places and so, yeah, the whole Jerry Jones thing, I, I thought that was a little like, to me, it didn't make sense. It was kind of like apples and oranges, right? Dude, Jim Crane is the best owner that the Astros have ever had in the history of the club. And it's not even close. So a lot of people are really impressed. Um, I don't know how impressed Jim Crane is, but Dusty Baker is really impressed with this guy named Justin Dearden. And he wants him on the roster. And uh, I don't know how soon he wants him on the roster, but um, he's not, he's kind of slowed down with the bat after hitting homers in his first two games, but he's making some great plays defensively. He threw a runner out at the plate today, but uh, we've, this is what Baker said. I'm impressed with him. We're impressed with him. That's why he's here. He's getting a lot of playing time, a lot of looks, and he's playing well. 
He's playing very well. Who knows? We'll see who's injured, who's not, who's playing well, and what we need. Everyone is getting about the same shot to impress us. And that was about, could he make the opening day roster? You know, excuse me. Sorry. I think it's great that he is touting Dearden because when Dusty Baker expresses confidence in you, it means a lot. And his his word, Eric, holds a lot of weight. His word holds um, – it, it means a ton. Because what I've learned about Dusty Baker is he doesn't say things unless he means them, right? right. And Dearden, again, like you and I mentioned his stats, I think it was on last night's show or actually the night before, this guy's done nothing but hit. I've seen the guy play outfield. He's a very good outfielder, Okay. Um, some people are saying, eh, you know, he's not super great in the outfield. I don't know. What I've seen, he tracks down the fly ball. He can throw. Um, he may not have the 80-rated arm like Pedro Leon, but something that Pedro Leon doesn't do is Justin Dearden hits. And he just seems like a natural hitter. Just seems like the ball just jumps off his bat. And that's a great vote of confidence. You're going to see him get a lot. And where I thought Corey Jolks might make a jump this year and might surprise some people, maybe that guy's just endeared it. And just, you've got a log jam with outfielders, a plethora of outfielders, and I think Dearden is the perfect guy. If anybody trips up in the major league level, you watch this guy, and he may be here opening day. Who knows? Yeah, you already have Madrid on the 40-man roster. You have Majevic on the 40-man cool. roster. But uh, Dearden is left-handed. He does have a smooth swing. It, it's effortless. Um, he doesn't look like like a lot of people, I, like I said on podcast yesterday, they swing out of their shoes. But his is just like a smooth swing, and it just goes really far. Yeah. So is he always going to hit a home run? No. But he seems to make hard contact, and it seems to uh, do something when he makes contact. So we'll have to kind of follow it. And but Jake Myers are is probably um, right now the favorite to make the team. Probably not by us, but I think the by all the reporters and the people that kind of follow the Astros, they probably feel like Jake Myers, especially with him. Hitting decently so far, uh, he's probably going to make the open day roster. He's on the 40 man roster. So it just, it makes a lot of sense. They want to see what he can do. He's good defensively. So he's probably healed from his shoulder issues. So they're going to give him a chance. Yeah. I mean, he's going to get a chance over Dearden. He's going to get a chance over anybody else along with Chess. Okay. Right. Um, but Jake Myers, just like, I don't know. I guess any player is in the situation. They control their own destiny. If Jake Myers comes up and and, and performs and surprises people, um, because there's not a lot of people that have confidence in him right now. Now, the Pocota projections for center field actually shows um, shows Jake Myers getting more playing time than Chas McCormick. And I don't know. And I've got to go back and reread the article, but they have those metrics that are based on certain things. So I, I know if that's based on maybe Brantley not playing a lot of left field and Alvarez no. playing a lot of DH. Um, you know, I don't know because I know in that article it actually does show um it it does show Brantley playing a little bit more left field than what okay. you would think. It it show it shows Brantley um and it shows uh it shows um it shows Jordan playing DH quite or being in the DH spot quite a bit. So We'll just have to see. I, I, I think the Astros are in a really good spot. They're not going to put someone out there that's just going to absolutely fail. Who knows? Chas McCormick, dude, if Chas McCormick shines, there's no reason why you don't let him start eight out of 10 games or seven out of 10 games because if he gets a starting spot, he deserves it. Jake Myers has got to do a lot this spring to supplant or overtake Chas McCormick, I think. But Dearden is it's clearly. It's a competition. <laughs> yeah, Dearden is clearly in the rearview mirror, and I know Myers and McCormick sees him. And we've seen this team do this in the past, and they've always responded well to, to competition. I think it's healthy. Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. It's, Jake that's Myers, exactly what I was McCormick. thinking of. That's what I was thinking about. So, hey, real quick, I want to get to this um, before we go too, too long here. Um, 
Chai San says, is our analytics team already looking at how we can take advantage of the new rules? Here, I hear Kyle Tucker is making some comments about it being an adjustment. It's best to get ahead and just embrace it. Let me tell you, from that town hall that I went to with Craig Biggio, he was like, dude, they got like 120 people up there on computers figuring stuff out. Like when you go to a ballpark you haven't been to, they have all the computer models. They have all the projections. They know how far the ball flies. They know how far you need to run, how fast, all that stuff. Trust me, their analytics team is on top of these things. Kyle Tucker is actually projected to have one of the best offensive years on the entire team. So I think he's going to be fine. I really think you're going to see a 30-30 or possible 40-40 guy this year for him. Yeah, I talked about yesterday also that the, you're going to see increase on steel in steals. I think we talked about it the other day too, with the the shorter distance between bases. And I think somebody like Kyle Tucker would definitely take advantage of that. And if the Astros have somebody with a little bit of speed, that's definitely something else we can see. I think Dearden has a little bit of uh, speed as well. Maybe not somebody who could steal 30 bases, but I think he can steal between 15 and 20 bases if he has enough playing time. So we'll have to see. I'm not going to get too overly excited after four or five games, but we'll have to see how he plays from there. So I, I think that the Astros are just doing what they're doing. I'm excited to see Alex Bregman finally get into the lineup on yeah. Friday. I'm excited to see what Farmer Valdez and Christian Javier both do in tomorrow's game. Uh, yes, uh, Javier will be pitching in relief. That does not mean anything. That just means that uh, they're probably trying to line up when they're going to be pitching in the World Baseball Classic. Exactly. That's probably what they're doing by starting on the same day. So uh, anything else before we close out, Brent? No, it's just a spring training. This is fun. Um, just just want to remind you all, hey, if you're listening to this on Thursday, in eight days, I'm going to be in Florida. I'm going to be there the 11th through the 19th. I'm going to be at um, – I'll give you the games and the dates where we'll be. So if you want to meet up, if, if 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 you want to talk Astros baseball, we'll be there. It's going to be a blast. I actually get to go to the World Baseball Classic as well. Super excited. Um, oh, and tomorrow I'm going to announce the winner of the two tickets for the Space Cowboys at Constellation Field that I have given away on behalf of myself and Locked On Astros. So we'll be giving those away. It's on March 27th. I'll be announcing that tomorrow night. Okay, cool. All right, that's all we got for this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. Um, I'll see you all at the rodeo tomorrow, and uh, Brett will have you all covered with all the news from tomorrow's game with uh, Frommer Valdez and Christian Javier and all the news and highlights from tomorrow's game. We are the Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. He is Brett Chancey. And yeehaw, and go get them, Strohs, and we'll see you tomorrow.